Okay, this is part four of the RV focused echo series, and this is actually all about the hepatic venous Doppler. Um, I wasn't sure where else to put this, but I think it fits nicely in with our discussion of RV echocardiography because it's really a great way to understand what is happening with our right atrial pressure. Now, if you are uh, still kind of a novice, that's okay. You might be trying to estimate your right atrial pressure from your IVC. And this is what the American Society of Echocardiography says you should do if you're trying to estimate the uh, right atrial pressure from the IVC. Now, the benefits of those folks is that they get to usually uh, echo people when they're not on ventilators and not in distress. And if you've uh, done any work with an IVC ultrasound, you recognize that there are a lot of factors in the ICU that make the IVC measurements an unreliable estimate of right atrial pressure, particularly things like worker breathing, high intra-abdominal pressure, et cetera. So these are the standards that the ASE puts out, um, put out over 10 years ago and then in 2010, trying to give you an estimate of what the right atrial pressure is based on the size of the IVC and its collapsibility in spontaneously breathing patients. Uh, but these are not always particularly useful uh, in the ICU. So when the ASC looks at an IVC size, it, it signs you know, uh, a pressure, right atrial pressure of 3, 8, and 15 arbitrarily uh, for these different levels. So let's look, let's look at hepatic vein tracings, um, which are a little bit better way to uh, understand what's happening in the right atrial uh, with right atrial pressures. Now they can't tell you right atrial pressures directly, but they can give you a sense of if is right atrial pressure high or low when the IVC can be deceiving. Of course, if you have a central line, you can measure it directly. What is the utility of measuring right atrial pressure at all? Well, I guess it's really most important if you want to actually know what your right ventricular and PA pressures are from the echo because you need your right atrial pressure as your starting point. So let's look at hepatic vein tracings. Um, you know, this is a good review of them anyways. They're going to become relevant in other situations like constrictive pericarditis. Uh, so let's just look at what they look like um, in health to start. So first, actually, I'll direct your attention over here. This is my right atrial pressure tracing, right? And if you're uh, working in an intensive care unit, you should be pretty familiar with this tracing. The A of the right atrial pressure tracing is your atrial contraction. Your C is your valve closure. That's the tricuspid valve. X descent is the tricuspid uh, valve excursion. If uh, you think back earlier in the series, that actually correlates to TAPSI. So during systole, there's descent of the base toward the apex, and that causes a pressure drop in the right atrium. Uh, v is the atrial filling. So um, during uh, atrial relaxation, it's accommodating more blood, filling up, pressure starts to rise, and then, rise, and then wide descent is the early ventricular diastolic filling. Uh, so this is when the tricuspid valve opens and the right atrial uh, blood dumps into the right ventricle, right atrial pressure plummets. And you can think about that like your, your E-wave. So you can look at a mitral E-wave or a tricuspid E-wave. Uh, that is going to correlate to your Y descent. Now let's look at the hepatic vein. Here's what happens. So with our atrial contraction, we have what is called atrial reversal. And that's backflow of blood into the hepatic vein with atrial contraction. That's because the IVC is a valveless system. So when the atrium contracts, the pressure not only goes up in the atrium, but it also goes up in the uh, hepatic vein. Then during ventricular systole, the right atrium is behaving like a reservoir. They call that reservoir function. So as the right atrium is relaxing with the tricuspid valve closed, uh, there is, uh, you know, on the right atrial pressure tracing, the pressure is actually rising at that point, um, but in the hepatic vein, the pressure is dropping rapidly because now the right atrium is able to function like a reservoir and is accommodating a big uh, bolus of blood from the hepatic vein. Then there's what's called conduit function of the right atrium, and that's when the blood is passively passing through the right atrium during ventricular diastole. And the pressure will drop again in the hepatic vein during that phase, but not nearly as much as it did during the reservoir function in health. So let's line those two things up. Atrial contraction causes a pressure spike in the right atrial pressure tracing, tracing which correlates to the atrial reversal in the hepatic vein. Then when ventricular systole is going on, the right atrium is behaving like a conduit, uh, which correlates to our X descent. And then uh, when our um, right atrium is, sorry, is acting like a reservoir, and then when our right atrium is acting like a conduit during ventricular diastole, which is our Y descent, the pressure drops again in the hepatic vein. So X descent, uh, it's all lined up right here, right? Atrial contraction, atrial reversal, also correlates to the, uh, if you look at the right ventricle, that correlates to your late diastolic A wave. When the reservoir function is going on, that uh, what's happening in the right atrium is that there's atrial relaxa relaxation, that's the X descent, uh, 
Uh, that's also during ventricular systole, right? And then there's the conduit function of the right atrium. Uh, that's during ventricular diastole, and that's when the atria are actually passive, so blood is just rushing through them and into, into the di uh, left ventricle during diastole. So all that is to say that the systolic component, if you were to put an EKG lead on, the systolic component of the hepatic vein tracing is usually uh, has a more negative deflection than the diastolic component. In other words, the reservoir function is much more pronounced with normal right atrial pressure states than the conduit function is. However, if we take a situation of high right atrial pressure, what ends up happening is that the uh, reservoir function becomes lost. So as the right atrial pressure becomes higher and higher, it is able to accommodate less blood as a reservoir when uh, the ventricle is undergoing systole. And it's really only during the conduit function that the right atrial pressure drops substantially when the ventricle is in diastole or in wide descent. So as the right atrium is rapidly emptying, uh, the conduit uh, function predominates and the pressure drops. So in high right atrial pressure states, it's really the only time that the hepatic vein pressure will drop because otherwise there's not a whole lot of blood flow from the hepatic vein into the right atrium when the reservoir is being full. Does that make sense? Full reservoir, high right atrial pressure, this uh, inflection is going to become less negative. Let's look at severe TR. Severe TR is interesting. Usually it's accompanied by high right atrial pressure. So first things first, I'm still gonna have my normal right atrial reversal. And I'm actually gonna start to have my X descent here. But as right ventricular systole comes into play, uh, I'm gonna, my reservoir is gonna be obliterated by the regurgitant jet. And the regurgitant jet's gonna cause pressure to rise substantially, not only in the right atrium, but it's also gonna back up into my hepatic veins. So my hepatic vein tracing is actually going to look like this, atrial reversal, start of my reservoir function, huge systolic reversal uh, because of the regurgitant jet if there's severe TR, and then this rapid uh, drop and a large uh, conduit function as the uh, ventricle is undergoing diastole, which of course would con uh, correlate to a merged C wa CV wave on my right atrial pressure tracing and a big Y descent, which is typically what we see in severe TR on the right atrial pressure tracing. So all of that's to say that given the limitations of the IVC, sometimes doing hepatic venous tracings can help give you a better understanding of what's happening with right atrial pressure. So we're just going to go through some examples here. So this example shows that there's not actually a lot of flow going on. Um, but what there is, you can see that there is still more of a per, uh, reservoir function being more predominant than the conduit function. Now, if I had EKG, it leads you to that much better. I'm not really getting a lot of atrial reversal, so this is probably a patient that's a relatively low flow state um, with relatively low pressures, I guess. This patient has uh, what looks to be a higher flow state, right? These inflections are much more pronounced. Now, here you might not know what's necessarily systole and what is, uh, you know, what's atrial reversal. Um, Suffice it to say that my atrial reversal is probably going to be my larger tracing, particularly if this patient is a lot, does not have a lot of TR on the right atrial pressure tracing. So if I look at my hepatic vein, um, I can see this is a big atrial reversal. Then I have a systolic phase that's not very pronounced. This is probably my TR jet. It's not very large in this patient. And then diastole, uh, the diastolic component is much more pronounced. So in this patient, there is much more conduit function than reservoir function. This patient has high right atrial pressure. This patient has actually very interesting physiology, and uh, we're going to talk through each part of it here. So um, you're seeing physiology in action here. This is my atrial reversal again. This is pretty clear to me that this is systolic than diastolic. Uh, you know, these two bumps are going to be much closer than these are going to be. So uh, this is my systolic phase. This is my diastolic phase. So again, I'm seeing that my reservoir function is being obliterated. My conduit function is predominating, which means my right atrial pressure must be high. It can't act as a reservoir. It can only really act as a conduit. So uh, my diastolic phase is higher. That must mean my right atrial pressure is high. And as I move on, I actually can see what happens. What do you think happened here? What happened here is this patient took a big breath. So as they start to decrease intrathoracic pressure, the um, flow increases into the right atrium. And then during, uh, as intrathoracic pressure is negative here, now I have actually reversal of this physiology that my systolic phase is more uh, active than my diastolic phase. So now that uh, that's the case, my right atrium is actually able to function as a reservoir again.
actually, this is probably during inspiration because this is the point at which the right atrium is not able to accommodate uh, additional blood because the um, there is increased venous return. And then actually after right ventricular ejection and during expiration when the thoracic pressure drops, um, my uh, physiology reverses. So either this is a passively ventilated patient um, and this is during uh, the positive pressure breath, or this is a uh, spontaneously breathing patient, and this is actually during exhalation when I get this reversal of physiology, and my right atrium is once again able to function like a reservoir. Whatever the case is here, my right atrial pressure is dropping at this point, and now it functions like a reservoir. And in between breaths, it's functioning as uh, the, only as a conduit. Here's one more tracing here. Uh, again, this one's actually very difficult to tell, and this is actually a trick question. So it's actually hard to make out here. If you didn't know this patient was an AFib, you wouldn't even know where to start. So uh, this is always, like anything in echo, interpreting in context, this patient was an AFib. So all of the reversal I'm seeing is not actually atrial reversal because I have no significant atrial contractions. Uh, the patient's also on a vent, so there's positive pressure ventilation in play. And the patient had significant uh, TR, both on the echo as well as the right atrial pressure tracing. So a lot of what I'm seeing here, I think, is systolic reversals um, as well as uh, some re uh, impediment to flow from being on positive pressure ventilation. So what I think here is this is probably a systolic flow, uh, you know, reservoir function. This is systolic flow reversal from the TR jet, and then this is conduit function. And then I would see the same thing with this, uh, this here. Systolic flow which is a reservoir function, systolic flow reversal, and then um, my conduit function. So that's really what I think I'm picking up here. Here it becomes a little muddy, but this is probably a good systolic, systolic flow reversal, conduit, systolic, or reservoir, systolic flow reversal, conduit. But this is a really tricky patient, uh, and I actually don't know what to make of this patient from this hepatic venous tracing alone. Good, and that's what I thought when I was putting down together the PowerPoint too, so uh, at least I'm internally consistent here. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, when we're looking at hepatic venous tracings, the big things are understanding whether or not the atrium is acting predominantly as a reservoir or as a conduit. If it really uh, is acting like a conduit, i.e. the hepatic vein pressure is only dropping during diastole, ventricular diastole, then the right atrial pressure is on the high end. If the, pa if the patient's right atrium is acting predominantly as a reservoir, that means right atrial pressure is normal. And remember that reservoir function occurs during ventricular systole.